there's a light somewhere. Good morning. My name is Diane Flynn, and I am honored to come back, and thank you for inviting me back to worship with you today. I am a seminary student at Pittsburgh Theological Seminary, and I live in Carnegie, but I am a Washington Countyan at heart. I'm originally from Washington County, and a graduate of California University, so I feel like coming home when I come down here. Thank you for having me. As we come to worship this morning, there are several announcements in your bulletin that um, I'd like to uh, make a point of noting. I see that you have uh, items for the uh, Samaritan's Purse, Operation Christmas Child that you participate in, as well as Toys for Tots I saw out in the lobby there. So uh, be sure to um, take note of those special charities. And it looks like you will be decorating your church for Christmas um, soon, in the next couple of weeks. So uh, I'm sure that all hands on deck are needed for that. So uh, please uh, make note of decorating the church as well. Are there any other announcements that need to be brought forth today? Yes. Pageant practice after the offertory. Any other items to uh, make note of today? Seeing none, let us worship God.
please stand and join me for our call to worship, printed in your bulletin. Sing God a brand new song. Earth and everyone in it, sing. Sing to God. Worship God. Shout the news of his victory from sea to sea. Take the news of his glory to the lost. News of his wonders to one and all. For God is great and worthy of a thousand hallelujahs. His infinite beauty makes the gods look cheap. Pagan gods are mere tatters and rags. God made the heavens. Royal splendor radiates from him. A powerful beauty sets him apart. Let us worship God. to God. Let's not let it slip through our fingers. We don't have a priest who is out of touch with our reality. He's been through weakness and testing, experienced it all, all but the sin. So let's walk right up to him and get what is what he is so ready to give. Take the mercy. Accept the help. Please join me in our unison prayer of confession. Let us pray. God, investigate my life. Get all the facts firsthand. I'm an open book to you. Even from a distance, you know what I'm thinking. You know when I leave and when I get back. I'm never out of your sight. You know everything I'm going to say before I start the first sentence. I look behind me and you're there. Then up ahead and you're there too. You are a reassuring presence coming and going. This is too much, too wonderful. I can't take it all in. Investigate my life, O oh God. Find out everything about me. Cross-examine and test me. Get a clear picture of what I'm about. See for yourself whether i am done everything wrong. Then guide me on the road to eternal life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, gave himself for us to redeem us from all our wickedness and to purify us for himself that we are his own, 
eager to do what is good. Thanks be to God for this inexpressible gift. Amen. I'd like to invite the children forward for the children's sermon. bag of things here today that I thought I would share with you. Can you all hear me over there? I can't tell. Yeah? Okay, good. All right. Let's see what we got here. Want to hold the bag? It's kind of heavy. You want to hold it? Okay. So, let's see. Have you ever known anybody who was in the military? Yeah? Who do you know that's in the military? Your pap? Yeah? Cool. Anybody else? Yeah? Your pap too? No kidding. Huh. I'll bet you there are folks out there who have served in the military too. Yeah? So, I, I have some, lots of members of my family who have served in the military. Have you ever seen anybody? Like when you go shopping or you're in church sometimes or, or out in a restaurant, have you ever seen anybody in a uniform? Or have they come to your school? You're going to see somebody Monday? Who? They're coming to your school. Well, that's great. I'm glad they're coming to your school. So you. It was Veterinarian's Day at school. <laughs> Veterans Day. Uh huh. They danced on stage and sang. Well, that's cool. Yeah. All the grades are going to sing a song. Well, that's cool. Yep, people on TV wear them. But there, you know what? There are a lot of people out here in this congregation, I'll bet, who have either served in the military or knew somebody who did. So I know some people who have served in the military and are still currently serving. So I brought, I thought that I wasn't sure if maybe some people might show up in their uniforms today or not. And I didn't know whether or not you have ever seen anybody in a uniform. So, you know what this is? Right, it's a it's a it's a jacket. It's called it's a dress jacket, and it's from my husband who used to be in the Marine Corps. Yeah, see that? These are medals. Have you seen medals before? Yeah, this one says rifle sharpshooter. This one says pistol sharpshooter. Well, when people go to the military, and the first thing they do is they go to boot camp. You ever heard of boot camp? This is where they learn to be a soldier. And it's really, really hard, right? Uh-huh, yeah. So it's really hard. So my husband went to boot camp, and he graduated from boot camp. So I right, show you, there he is in his dress uniform after he graduated from boot camp. And these are all the guys that he was with at boot camp. Everybody in here is in the Marine Corps. Uh, no, there weren't any ladies in his platoon, but there were ladies there. Definitely. I saw them. So anyway, this is what it looks like. And here's some of the guys, too, who graduated with me, too. So everybody here is in the military. So, I 
something else. Here's a couple of my family members, my nephew and his wife. They're both in the Air Force. She's out of the Air Force. He is currently serving in the Air Force right now today over in uh, Moon Township over by the airport. He's a sergeant in the security forces. Security forces are like policemen for the military. So my husband was in the military police with the Marine Corps, and he got right, he got a badge. So they wear, sometimes he would have the badge. I don't think it really came out of this thing too much, but anyway, he got that. So, and they wear a hat, you know, what do they call this, guys? Sean used to call it a beanie. I don't know. <laughs> anyway, get a hat that they wear. Have you ever seen these? You know what these are called? These are, well, yeah, it is a chain, but they're called dog tags. I don't know if they issue them. They still issue them in the military, folks? Yeah? All right. These are dog tags, and... The soldiers wear these around their necks all the time. They're supposed to wear them all the time because it has some of their information. It has their name on it. It has their, what they used to call serial number on it, which was like their identification number. And some other things like um, their blood type. And sometimes it would say what religion they were. So most of the time they said Protestant, but my husband made sure that he wanted it to say, I don't know, can you see this big long word at the bottom? Presbyterian. Yeah, he wanted to, if he was ever found, he wanted people to know that he was Presbyterian. Mm-hmm. Right. So sometimes when people pass away, when they go to heaven, and we have a funeral for them here on earth, if they have served in the military, sometimes there is a flag that is draped over their casket. And then the family gets the flag, and they get to take it home and keep it as a reminder to them that their loved one served in the military. So that's what this is. That's why I have one here. And I'm sure there are a bunch of people over there who have it. So Tuesday, some of you may not have school. I don't know. You know well, there's Veterans Day that we're going to celebrate Tuesday. And on Veterans Day, we always remember those folks who have served their country. Oh, oh yeah. Well, how about that? Oh, yeah, it is cool. It's very cool. So not, not only do we honor people who have passed away, who have gone to heaven while they served our country, but we honor everybody out here who has either done it in the past, like long time before we were ever born, or are doing it now. So I thought you could help me recognize those folks out here who have served in the military. Can you help me do that? Can you help me? Okay. So. We'll just stay here. We'll stand up because what I want you to do is I want you to see everybody who has ever helped serve in the military because they fight for our freedom. They allow, because of what they, done, they have done, we're allowed to worship here free. We can do it anytime we want to. There are people in other countries who can't. I just saw on the news today where somebody just got released from North Korea. They were in jail because they left a Bible on a restaurant dining room, on a restaurant table. You believe that? The guy wasn't allowed to do that. But here we can do that if we want to. So what I want you to do is stand up. And what we're going to do is we're going to pray, but as we pray, I want you to look out at the congregation and see who has served in the military, 
or who has had family to serve in the military. So when I call out their names and we say a special prayer to them, I want you to see who they are. Okay? And after church, I want you to make sure that you tell them thank you. Can you do that? Yeah? Okay. So, we're going to have a special prayer. And I'd like, during our prayer, for those of you to stand, who I call out, to see, to, so that we can honor all of you who have sacrificed your own lives and your own family to honor our country. Let us pray. God of love, peace, and justice, it is your will for the world that we may live together in peace. You have promised through the prophet Isaiah that one day the swords will be beaten into plowshares. Yet we live in a broken world and there are times that war seems inevitable. Let us recognize with humility and sadness the tragic loss of life that comes in war. Even so, as we gather here free from persecution, we may give thanks to those that have served with courage and honor. I ask all of you who are in active duty or reserve duty, or are family members of someone who is in active duty or reserve duty to please rise. God, we praise you for those that are willing to serve. Let all soldiers, Marines, sailors, airmen, and Coast Guardsmen serve with honor, pride, and compassion. Do not let their hearts be hardened by the actions they take. Strengthen their families. Keep them surrounded in your love and peace. Now I ask all those who have served in the military in the past who are honorably discharged, if you would please rise. are people who have served a long time ago, who, have, who are finished now. You see how many there are? Yeah. Let's pray. God, we praise you for those that have served in the military. We thank you for those that put the welfare of others ahead of their own safety. Let us all be inspired by their sacrifice in service to those who needed protection. Now I ask all those who have had a loved one die during their service, if they would please rise. Either in World War II, Korea, or others. Let us pray. God, we praise you for those that have made the ultimate sacrifice. We ask that you comfort those that still feel the pain of their loss. Keep us mindful that you have promised to comfort those that mourn. Now I ask all of the congregation to stand for those who have, uh, who have gathered here today in the name of Jesus in freedom to worship. Lord, we praise you for granting us these freedoms. Let us honor those who have served by working for peace. Let us never forget those that have served. And let us never let go of your promise of peace. We pray all this in the strong and powerful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated. Thank you.
And let us take a moment to pass the peace of Christ one to another.
Thank you, choir. That was beautiful. Now let's bring to God our tithes and offerings. As we bring our prayers and concerns and our joys to the Lord, I'd like to offer up a time for uh, those of you to um, bring to us the name of a person or yourself who would need prayer for today. Is there anyone who would like to ask for prayer? Yes. Her name is Wanda. Wanda, thank you. Anyone else? Yes. I'm sorry? Jenny? Okay. Anyone else? Are there any joys that you would like to share today? Where have you seen God working this week? You know he's worked somewhere. We have asked, uh, we have been asked to pray for the Toys for Tots. Um, for the Toys for Tots program. I know that's a very special program. It was special to my husband's heart when he was in the Marine Corps. He loved collecting toys. Yes. Oh, she's, she's better. Good. And what is her name? Morgan. Wonderful. Okay. And uh, we've been asked, to, we've been uh, given a praise report for God's love and healing power and opening doors in our lives. Amen to that. Let us go to the Lord in prayer. Gracious God, because we are not strong enough to pray as we should, 
you provide Jesus and the Holy Spirit to intercede for us in power. In this confidence, we ask you to accept our prayers this day. God of mercy, we give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all people. We bless you for your creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life. But above all, for your boundless love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace, and for the hope of glory. Give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but with our lives by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all of our days. Faithful God, you, you formed your church from the despised of the earth and showed them mercy that they might proclaim your salvation to all. Strengthen those who you choose today that they may faithfully endure all trials by which you conform your church to the cross of Christ. Sovereign God, you hold both the history of nations and the humble life of small towns like Monongahela in your care. Preserve the people of every nation from tyrants. Heal them of disease and protect them in time of upheaval and disaster that all may enter the kingdom that cannot be shaken. Merciful God, since Jesus longed to protect Jerusalem as the hens gather her young under her wings, we ask you to guard and strengthen all who live and work here in Monongahela and the surrounding communities. Deliver your people from jealousy and contempt that they may show mercy to all their neighbors. Compassionate God, your Son gives rest to those weary with heavy burdens. Heal the sick in body, mind, and spirit. Lift up the distressed. Be a friend to those who grieve. Comfort the anxious. Father, we pray especially for Wanda in her last days here on earth. Comfort her and her family and her friends and to let them know that neither death nor life nor things present nor things to come will ever separate her from the love of God. And we pray especially for Jenny this day. Father, give Jenny your comfort and your care. Let her know that you are with her every moment in the good and bad. Father, we offer up a, a praise for Morgan and her family today, allowing Morgan to get better and to get back to school and to get back to her friends and to allow you to shine through her. We praise you, God, for that. Father, awaken those who damage themselves and others through the use of any drug, through abuse of victims and other crimes. Fill all people with your Holy Spirit that they may bear each other's burdens so, and so fulfill the law of Christ. 
We pray all this in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Our scripture lesson for today comes from 1 Thessalonians, chapter 5, verses 1 through 24. Oh, that's not it. If you have a pew Bible, I encourage you to follow along in the pew, but I had a feeling it might be up there. Yes, it is. Okay, good. Hear the word of the Lord. Now, brothers, about times and dates, we do not need to write to you, for you know very well that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. While people are saying peace and safety, destruction will come on them suddenly as labor pains on a pregnant woman, and they will not escape. But you, brothers, are not in the darkness, so that this day should surprise you like a thief. You are all sons of the light and sons of the day. We do not belong to the night or to the darkness. So then let us not be like others who are asleep, but let us be alert and self-controlled. For those who sleep, sleep at night. And those who get drunk, get drunk at night. But since we belong to the day, let us be self-controlled, putting on faith and love as a breastplate, and the hope of salvation as a helmet. For God did not appoint us to suffer wrath, but to receive salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. He died for us, so that whether we are awake or asleep, we may live together with him. Therefore, encourage one another and build each other up, just as, in fact, you are doing. For now we ask you, brothers, to respect those who work hard among you, who are over you in the Lord, and who admonish you. Hold them in the highest regard, in love, because of their work, Live in peace with each other. And we urge you, brothers, warn those who are idle. Encourage the timid. Help the weak. Be patient with everyone. Make sure that nobody pays back wrong for wrong, but always try to be kind to each other and to everyone else. Be joyful always. Pray continually. Give thanks to all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Do not put out the Spirit's fire. Do not treat prophecies with contempt. Test everything. Hold on to the good. Avoid every kind of evil. May God himself, the God of peace, sanctify you through and through. May your whole spirit, soul, and body be kept blameless in the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who calls you is faithful, and he will do it. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
I will be the first to admit that I am a very independent person. I don't like to ask for help from friends or family if there is any way I can take care of it myself. Several years ago, my husband would travel across the country for days and weeks at a time as an over-the-road tractor-trailer driver. As first-time homeowners, our first home was an old starter home that sometimes needed a little loving care. When Sean had time off from work, he would be home for a few days before he had to go back out on the road. In that time, he would start projects to repair or update the home, but would need to leave soon after he started only to delay the unfinished project. Does that sound like your household? The project would be delayed until the next time he came home. If you have ever traveled on an extended vacation, you understand how tired you are when you come home. The situation is the same for someone who does it for a living. In addition to the home repair projects, there was yard work to be done, bills to be paid, laundry to be done, family to visit, church to attend, maybe even a date night. Before we knew it, it was time for him to be back out on the road. During this season in our marriage, I decided that when Sean was home, he needed to relax and unwind and not worry about the household chores. While he was away, I made sure that I took care of all the chores and maintenance as much as I could so, he had time, so we had time to be together as a family when he came home. Most men would think this was great. But Sean said, why are you doing all this when I'm supposed to be taking care of you? and our home too. This is our home and I need to share the responsibility for it also. I couldn't argue with that. The same holds true for the church. I don't mean the church as in the building and grounds. I mean the church as a group you and me as followers of Christ. It takes all of us to prepare for the day of the Lord. The day when Christ returns to reign on this earth. The congregation of the First Presbyterian Church of Monongahela has been in this community for years sharing the good news with anyone and everyone in your community. You have been preparing them for the day of the Lord. You are consistent in sharing the gospel with anyone who walks through your doors to attend worship or enjoy a meal, shopped at your clothes closet, or attended vacation Bible school and maybe have heard the gospel for the very first time. When Christian churches around the world struggle to determine the direction they should go in their ministry efforts, they use these words of Paul in today's scripture as a guide. Paul assumes that Christians and non-Christians alike will be present when the day of the Lord arrives. Christians, watchful and ready. Non-Christians, surprised as by a thief at night. The day of the Lord was a prominent designation of the day on which Christ returns. 
It is well known for through the Old Testament where it is used of God's drawing near in judgment. This prominent association of the day of the Lord with judgment is carried on in the New Testament where the last judgment and final rewards and punishments are in view. According to 2 Peter chapter 3, the heavens, the earth, and the elements will be destroyed to make a new heaven and a new earth. From the very beginning of this chapter, Paul reminds the First Presbyterian Church of Monongahela of our communal sense of identity in Christ by aligning ourselves as extensions of his body holding each other up because we cannot be people of faith on our own alone it's too hard to do it by yourself Paul wraps his counsel around the promise of God here's the encouragement you are not children of the darkness, but children of the light and a child of God. From the very start of this chapter, Paul appeals to their awareness of God's promise, even to the point of saying that they don't even have to take notes to be reminded that they are children of God. They are already fully aware of the day of the Lord that will come when God is ready. And they will need to be ready too. Brothers and sisters, we need to be ready for it because we have a job to do. We are reminded in verse 9 that God has appointed us to obtain salvation and glory in Jesus the only way we can do that is by going out of our doors and, sh and out of our church building walking alongside those in need sharing the word of God to someone else not sitting inside our church building and waiting for people to come to us. For the non-Christians who do not know Christ on the day of the Lord, Paul says that they will experience wrath. The wrath in this context is the judgment and punishment that will fall in the day of wrath upon those who show no regret or sorrow for their sin or behavior. There is no doubt that sharing the gospel with others is daunting. The church, your church, has elected leaders who love the Lord and love and love doing his work. They have agreed to walk alongside you and your pastors as you move forward in ministry, continuing the legacy of this church, to continue to think of new ways to share the word of God in the 21st century. Beginning in verse 12, Paul makes a special plea to the church to take special care of those who are called to church leadership because they have received a special calling from God. He asks us to have love and respect for them. And I ask you to intentionally pray for them on a regular basis. But it's not just the church leaders who are asked to do the work of the church. Starting in verse 14 the, and following, Paul says that it is the responsibility of all of us to carry on the work of the church, not just the church leaders. We are to counsel with those 
who are not doing their part. Encourage the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Be patient with all of them. Seek to do well. Always rejoice and pray without ceasing, giving thanks to God. Always. Friends, the work of the church is hard. It takes dedication from all of us to utilize our gifts collectively to do God's work. We can't do it alone. We need to be in constant communication with God to see what he is up to in our lives as a congregation called to do his work. How can we do that? Through prayerful inner searching. It sounds hard, but Jesus himself taught us how to do it in Matthew 6, when he was teaching his disciples how to pray, he said in verses 6 through 8, But when you pray, go into your room and shut the door, and pray to your Father who is in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And when you pray... Do not heap up empty phrases as the Gentiles do, for they think they will be heard for their many words. Do not be like them, for your Father knows that you knows what you need before you ask him. The work of the church is hard. But we can do it when we combine the acts of paying the bills, preparing the fellowship meals, blessing our children and sending them off to camp, and teaching one another about God when we combine those acts with the consistent, prayerful, inner searching, asking God to reveal himself in everything we do. We can pray alone, or we can pray together. Prayer and listening for God is God's answer to our prayers. Praying alone and praying together should be part of everything we do when we do God's work in this place as well as outside of this place. It should be done for every meeting, before every Sunday school lesson taught, before every meal, and before every planning session, whether it be one person doing the planning alone, or where two or more are gathered in Christ's name. Oswald Chambers says that the voice of the Spirit of God is as gentle as a summer breeze. So gentle that unless you are living in complete fellowship and oneness with God, you will, ne you will not hear it. The sense of warning and restraint that the Spirit gives to us in the most amazing, gentle ways. And if you are not sensitive enough to detect his voice, you will quench it. And your spiritual life will be impaired. This sense of restraint will always come as a still, small voice. So faint that no one except a saint of God will notice it. Those saints of God are you and me. And because we continue to do the work of prayerful inner searching, God 
will reveal himself in this place, in this time. Amen. Please stand and join me in stating our affirmation of faith as we recite the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into heaven. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. Please join me in our closing hymn, Be Strong in the Lord. God himself, the God who makes everything holy 
and holy, whole and holy, make you whole and holy, put you together, spirit, soul, and body, and keep you fit for the coming of the Master, Jesus Christ, the one who called you, is completely dependable. If he said it, he will do it. Amen.